The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 1243 in the name of Bob Doris on Year of the Dad. I wonder what that's about. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Those members who wish to speak in the debate, please press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Bob Doris to open the debate. Mr Doris, seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, President Officer, for your kind introduction. Um, I'm pleased to welcome volunteers, staff and families from Homestart Glasgow North uh, to Parliament this afternoon, as well as representatives of Homestart projects from right across Scotland and beyond. I have had the privilege of working with Homestart Glasgow North uh, over a, a number of years now. This year they celebrate their 15th birthday and I know very well the benefits that Homestart provides vulnerable families across my constituency of Maryhill and Springburn. It is fair to say that both the Homestart volunteers and families supported tend to be predominantly women, wonderful, strong, resilient and inspirational women. But it did lead me to ask the question, what about Dad? I was aware that 2016 was the year of the Dad and I have been particularly keen to find out more. I have been particularly influenced by two personal events this year. My wife Janet gave birth to Cameron, our first child, in January of this year. And on the 5th of May this year, on the day of our Scottish Parliament elections, my dad passed away from terminal cancer. I am still working through how both these events have changed me. Becoming a dad has certainly been a life-affirming joy. Losing my, my own dad has produced and still does produce a flurry of emotions that I grapple with. Of course, these two events will be very common and familiar for many men in this chamber and across Scotland. Becoming a father can be as scary as it can be wonderful. What many of us are very lucky to have, however, presiding officer, are strong support networks, family and friends, work colleagues, a range of social and community networks that we plug into to gain peer support and advice. But what if those networks are weak or they change? If dads feel isolated, who offers support then? Of course, presiding officer, Year of the Dad is a celebration of fatherhood and I commend the Fathers Network for their significant contribution to the Year of the Dad and I hope to work with them in the future. However, Year of the Dad also made me more interested in what support or services exist for dads in the communities who find themselves in challenging circumstances such as I've outlined. How do we engage with dads that may need assistance and offer support in a way that is respectful, that is meaningful and relevant to them, and of benefit, of course, to their children, the most important thing of all? How do we celebrate fatherhood in more challenging circumstances and ensure that dads build strong, lifelong relationships with their children, particularly during those very important early years? I have heard of various organisations out there and, of course, most notably, many of us will have heard of Dad's Rock. However, what I wanted to know was what the organisation that I knew best, Homestart Glasgow North, thought about my considerations about how dads in my constituency who found themselves in challenging situations, how they could benefit. I met with Nikki O'Hara, who runs Homestart Glasgow North, along with a number of her colleagues. I was pleased to find out that Homestart not just in Glasgow North, but already actively looking at working with dads across Scotland. And my motion notes uh, about projects being developed in South Glasgow, in Dundee, in Fife and in Gail and Butte. And we should put on record our thanks to all the volunteers and staff members there making a success of those projects. But of course, my constituency presiding officer is Mary Hill Street Springburn. And I'm delighted that Nikki and the Glasgow North Home Start team mm -hmm are now set to launch a dad's group locally. Ian MacDonald has joined the Home Start team and together with group worker Mary McConnell, they're developing a new dad's group to focus on supporting dads with children under four. Whilst Home Start will provide information and training sessions to dads, the group will do what Home Start Glasgow North, what the Home Start network does best. It will work with dads, it will have fun, it will build, it will build trust, it will build relationships and provide practical activities. In doing so, the aim is to strengthen father-child relationships, reduce isolation and build support networks for dads. Homestart will help dads become more confident and resilient 
as well as aiding children's social and emotional development. The group will run on a weekly basis in Mary Hill, and I hope and they hope that it will run uh, for three eight-week blocks over a three-year period. And I'd like to thank both the SDV Appeal and the Catanac Trust for their financial commitment to the Dads Project, as well as Homestart UK for helping fund the initial scoping exercise. The project has set clear outcomes that can be measured, not just for dads, but also for the children to make progress with their social and emotional development through participation in age-appropriate activities with their dads. It is important that we evaluate these programmes. A strong evidence base and demonstrable success is important. I believe that this will be achieved and that these projects right across Scotland can play an important role in the health and well-being of dads and their children in the years ahead. That presents both a challenge and an opportunity to local authorities, to our NHS, to health and social care partnerships, and to our own Scottish Government to consider how to ensure the long-term and sustainable funding of such projects. I'm sure Homestart Glasgow North and the wider network would welcome an ongoing dialogue with the Scottish Government and partners to identify sustainable funding opportunities in the years ahead. And I hope the Minister can this afternoon commit to opening up that dialogue. However, today is about a celebration of fatherhood eh, with Year of the Dad. Every day, the vast majority of dads do a wonderful job, a great job. A recent Fathers Network survey found that 59% of dads read to their children every day or most days, and that 82% of dads cook for their kids at least a few times a week. That's pretty good, but there's definitely room for improvement there, dads, and I include myself in terms of the room for improvement. Presiding officer, my favourite time of the day is around 5.30am every morning. That's dad's time with Cameron. His first feed of the day, his first smile of the day, his first play of the day, and yes, his first nappy change of the day. That's our time together. I have to say Cameron didn't get the memo this morning. It was about quarter past four, and I'm feeling slightly tired, presiding officer. But in concluding, let, let's be proud of the role dads play each and every day, building loving relationships with their children that last a lifetime. It's new to me, but it won't be new to many people in the chamber or watching across Scotland. But let us also acknowledge that sometimes dads, just like mums, need a helping hand and some additional support. That's what Homestart do so well. And it is a privilege to have highlighted their excellent work here this afternoon and the part that they are playing to develop a lasting legacy for Year of the Dad 2016. In closing, presiding officer, I very much hope everyone will be able to join me after this debate at a parliamentary event that I am hosting where we find out much more about the work of Homestart UK when they asked that question that I started with, what about Dad? Thank you very much. Well, Fulton McGregor, the bar has been set high on feeding and nappy changing, so I call you next. We're followed by Donald Cameron. <laughs> Thanks very much, uh, presiding officer. Um, it gives me great pleasure to be able to speak in this debate, and I'd like to thank Bob Doris for bringing this to the members' debate and giving us the opportunity to discuss it here. Like Bob, when I first noticed the debate on the Business Bulletin, I thought that I just had to speak in this, and that's because, as many of my colleagues will know, uh, that earlier this week, I was able to share the news with them that myself and my partner are expecting in May next year our second child. So, thanks very much. Sir. And of course, mentioning that, I would like to take the opportunity to also mention my wee boy, Caird, who is now two years old and, it's fair to say, is my whole world. He was born on the 2nd of March 14 and changed my life completely. Uh, and I think like most parents would recognise um, when they say something that used to be said to me and I thought, oh, that, that can't be true, but I can't remember what life was like before that. And everything that I do in politics and the decisions that I make and the things that I think about are, are about his future in mind. Yeah, and without straying too much into a political element during a, a members' debate, I remember clearly the, the night of the independence referendum in 2014 when he was only about six months old and returning from the count knowing that, that my side, yes, had, had lost. I, I just broke down in tears coming back and 
it was faced with coming back to, to him and not been able, from the way I've seen it, I know, I know other parties have different views, but from the way I've seen it, not been able to give him uh, the normal independent country to grow up in. But back to the present, I've now talked about him here in the chamber and uh, I'm, I'm so proud of that and I'll, I'll be able to, to show this to him and his younger brother or sister uh, when they're older, probably likely much to their in embarrassment and I'm sure the parliamentary authorities will have calls from them wondering how the archives can be deleted. Uh, I also think it's important to remember those for a multitude of reasons who have not been able to become dads or uh, sadly who have been a dad and had that taken from them again under many different circumstances. And of course all the mothers and children affected by these situations also. I think that any opportunity we have to note um, such situations and the bravery shown um, by the people involved, we, sh we should. And moving on from yesterday's uh, fantastic debate and here on adoption and permanency, let's give some thought also to the adoptive and foster dads across Scotland who are so selfless and contribute so much to our society. And I have to say, I think that was a fantastic debate yesterday um, across the chamber and all the, all the, the parties uh, and members who contributed. I'm so pleased to hear about the initiatives in Glasgow as mentioned by Bob Doris. And as a member of the Justice Committee, I'd like to mention some current initiatives promoting the role of dads in their child's development. Uh, for example, Bernardo's working in, in Pullman. Uh, there was recently a, a reception uh, that I attended just um, a couple of months back and, and we were shown to a video. Um, and it was uh, some of the staff in Pullman and from Bernardo's working with young men there who were actually reading their child, the Gruffalo. I think actually the Minister, Mark, McDonald uh, spoke at that event and that was fantastic to see and the effect it had in these young men's lives being able to uh, interact with their children was fantastic and of course families outside who I met this week and had the pleasure of speaking to at the steering group they're doing invaluable work as well promoting contact between uh, children and parents in custody and, and mainly you know we have to say that as mainly young men um, and in my own constituency uh, I've been contacted uh, about a group uh, called Mac Fun, and the Mac stands for Men and Children, and that's been recognising dads and who don't live with their children to become more involved in a, in a, a fun uh, environment. And I can see that my, my time is, is nearly up. It is up. Oh, thank okay, you very sorry. much. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Cheers. Great, thanks. I now call Donald Cameron to be followed by Ian Gray. Mr Cameron. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. For many reasons, I'm more than happy to support Bob Doris's motion today and the Year of the Dad campaign in general, not least because I'm the father of three young children. And my six-year-old son recently had to fill in a school questionnaire about his dad's appearance. And in the section where he was meant to enter the colour of my hair, he wrote the words, he has no hair. <laughs> Debates like this rightly prompt those of us with children to reflect on how we act as parents but also allow all of us to consider our own childhood and how we were supported by our fathers and or our mothers. I have been incredibly fortunate to have been given endless support and encouragement by my parents to this day, and I hope in some small way to pass on that experience to my children. But I was lucky, very lucky, and there are many who will not have been. Across Scotland today, there are families with young children struggling with a range of issues, such as isolation, postnatal depression, physical health problems, bereavement, and many other issues. Families with young children who need help. Families with young children who need support. And we can do many things to support these families and the fathers, mothers, carers, and even grandparents within such families. For that reason, I'm delighted that Bob Doris has highlighted the work of Homestart in his motion, not least because, as the motion states, Homestart operates in Argyll and Butte, within my own region of the Highlands and Islands. As the motion notes, Homestart has a great track record in helping parents, and in particular has done a lot of work in developing a greater focus on supporting fathers when stress is placed on them in particular. I would like to use this opportunity to applaud the crucial work of Homestart in helping families using a combination of volunteers and groups, which will in turn assist the development of our young people at a critical stage in their lives and go some way in tackling many of the problems I mentioned a moment ago. 
Indeed, this kind of campaign is very important. As Fathers Network Scotland highlights, it is very much the case that the tired old stereotypes of fathers being breadwinners and mothers being caregivers is long outdated and out of step with modern life. More women are in work than ever before and more men are dedicating time to parenting. With Fathers Network Scotland noting that fathers give a mere 15 minutes of parenting time on average in the 70s, yet now dedicate more than three hours a day with extra time on weekends. In fact, more dads stay at home than ever before, with 6% of married households having a working mother and a stay-at-home father. This was less than 2% in the 1970s. Again, it's a small but growing trend. While there is a disproportionately large number of single-parent households with women being the primary parent, 10% of single-parent households across the UK have a male primary parent. Yet there is very little focus on this group in general, or at all, and we ignore them at our peril. So I am pleased that there has been wide cross-party support for this motion. Sometimes when men's issues come up in politics, they tend to be seen by some as being of lesser importance than other issues. International Men's Day was only a few, held a few days ago, and it regularly receives scorn from some commentators that isn't justifiable. In conclusion, I'd like to commend Bob Doris for championing this cause. And I'm happy to attach my name and the support of these benches to this motion. 2016 is the first ever year of the dad, and I'm certain it will go from strength to strength. And I'm glad that as a parliament, we are recognizing it tonight. Regretfully, I can't attend the reception tonight, not because of a competing parliamentary or social event deputy presiding officer, but because it's my children's bath time. Well, we can't criticise you for that. Um, Ian Gray to be followed by <coughs> Gillian Martin. Mr Gray, please. Thank you, President Officer, and thanks to Bob Doris for securing tonight's de debate, which uh, gives me the opportunity to bring a message of solidarity to the Year of the Dad from Scotland's Grandpa's section. Uh, but it also gives me an opportunity to say a few words uh, about a charity that I value very highly, and that's uh, Homestart. Um, uh, we don't get the opportunity to sing Homestart's praises in here all that often. Uh, they are not the kind of charity which pursues a big national profile. They don't come and bother us here uh, as often perhaps as uh, some charities do. And yet, uh, I would venture to suggest that pretty well every member of this parliament will be aware of their work uh, in their constituency uh, because it is so valuable and because what they do is so practical uh, and that is what they spend their time doing uh, rather than uh, promoting themselves. It goes absolutely to the heart uh, uh, of families' needs, supporting and befriending families uh, under stress. Uh, and I think their great strength is that they are really prepared to do anything that that family needs in order to support them. It's not about what Homestart thinks would be good for a family. It's much more about what does that family uh, actually need. Not surprisingly, the home start uh, that I know best is home start in East Lothian, uh, led by Mary McLeod in the chair and by Katie Pollock, who's the, the senior coordinator. Uh, they um, organise around 40 volunteers and that allows them to support 75 families, uh, providing support, therefore, reaching out to around 169 children. And they've been doing uh, that work in East Lothian uh, since uh, 2000, and very valuable work it is indeed. But I think that being so embedded right in the heart of family life is probably why uh, Homestart understand and the importance of fathers and understood the importance of this first year of the dad and picked up uh, that idea and ran with it. But of course, there is plenty of research which backs up the importance of fathers. Uh, a strong correlation, for example, between uh, children who don't see their fathers or maybe don't see them at all and childhood depression. And much more positively, a whole list of positive benefits which come from having a confident, hands-on dad as part of your family. Even a higher uh, IQ, but certainly uh, less behavioural problems, uh, a great deal less stress, children who are much happier uh, in life. All of that proven uh, by research, but I think also by the practical experience uh, of the, the volunteers and staff uh, of 
uh, Home Star. But of course, I, I, I've already said how practical Home Star are, and it doesn't surprise me that their involvement in Year of the Dad has actually led to the creation of projects, which, as Bob's uh, um, uh, motion says, will be a legacy for this first Year of the Dad, at least in some parts in, of Scotland. And I do hope that Home Star in East Lothian might be listening and considering whether that's something that they might do too. Although I should, in the passing, mention another charity, Dad's Work, who do tremendous work uh, in my constituency uh, with dads. One of the themes of Year of the Dad, of course, is what did your dad teach you? Uh, and I was thinking about that prior to speaking this evening. And actually, when I think about it, I think about what my dad didn't teach me. You see, my dad was a car mechanic to trade and could take any vehicle you could give him, car, bus, lorry, uh, in his time he did all of them completely to pieces, put it back together again and make it work. But he could also rewire and replumb a house. He could uh, use wood to make anything that you could think of. He was a pretty good gardener as well, and I remember him even building a garage. He taught me none of that. He was determined that I would earn my living with my head rather than my hands. So he left me a highly qualified but completely cack-handed uh, young man. But this is what he did teach me. He taught me that you never let your family down, that you always get engaged in your community as he was, whether it was through his church, through the Boys' Brigade, or through his trade union uh, at his work. He taught me that you put your family first, you put your community second, and you put yourself third. And in my own curious way, that's the lesson my dad taught me, which I have tried to live by. It was lovely. I enjoyed that. Um, I'm not Gillian Martin to followed by Finlay Carson, please. Gillian Martin. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It gives me great pleasure to speak today in a debate brought forward by my colleague and relatively new dad, Bob Doris, in the year of the dad. And I have to say that I had good notice of Mr Doris's intention to have this member's debate as we chatted about it before the summer recess. And I issued him with a challenge. Uh, he's never forgotten about it. And that was to conduct the debate with his, at that time, brand new son, Cameron, in a sling attached to him as he spoke. Now, Mr Doris has secured this debate slightly later than I anticipated when I threw down the gauntlet, so I'd like to go on record that he's off the hook as Cameron's probably passed his more portable and docile stage, although I do love the idea of a wee one having a wee crawl about the chamber. I want to talk about modern fatherhood. Modern fatherhood to me is shared parenting and dad's playing a full role in a child's life. I'm married to a modern dad, John, whose hands-on parenting and shared role in the care for our children has led to me being able to do the work that I do. If it weren't for the interchangeable roles of mum and dad in my house, I wouldn't be able to spend four nights, three days a week away from home in this job, and I certainly wouldn't have been able to spend a week away on a job in an offshore installation, as I used to do far too many times to count when I ran my business. Things have certainly moved on since our grandparents and even our parents within the baby business. And these days, there are provisions in place for men to take a more nurturing and active role in a child's daily life. Dad is not just someone who a child sees coming through the door tired at the end of the day as the kids have been put to bed. And uh, just uh, Mr. Gray's reminded me about the, the question of what my dad taught me. I just have to go on record as apologising to my dad. He tried to teach me how to play the bagpipes and I was a nightmare student, so I want to apologise for that. He tried his very best. But there's a long way to go until things even out. And as I would say that this is um, not because of any reluctance on the part of dads, new and old, to play a fuller role in their child's upbringing. Last week, I led a members debate on flexible working and we heard testimony from some of our speakers that dads often felt they were unable to ask for family friendly hours or flexible working and faced a great deal of expectation on them having a more traditional role than their female counterparts and in some cases even derision for asking for flexibility in the first place. One member told of a chap who left a law practice to go elsewhere as they would not be flexible enough to accommodate him taking his daughter to school. Great business decision there. It seems in some cases the wishes and needs of dads are secondary to those of mums when it comes to issues around the workplace and parenting. 
And the low take-up of shared parental leave is maybe an indication not of the lack of willingness of dads to take it, but of a more of a worry of the negative attitudes from employers and fellow employees if they were to exercise that right. Of course, there are other reasons for the low take-up, and it is proven that pay rate is a huge issue for couples. The gender, gender pay gap extends its reach even further, it seems, into affecting the full role that dads are entitled to take when their baby is just new into the world. It makes economic sense that the highest earner will be the one who goes back to work. And if that is overwhelmingly the dad, then dads will miss out on this opportunity to take leave in this formative and wonderful time of bonding with your child. Although I have to say that I would have jealously guard my maternity leave, but uh, that's a side issue. <laughs> a new debate and yet another reason to see the gender pay gap eradicated. Because equality works both ways. Dads need the same rights to play a full role in their child's lives. And we must look at bringing down the societal and economic barriers to this. This generation are the pioneers of shared parenting. Come on the modern dads, leading the way for future generations where parental roles are interchangeable as far as biology will allow. Thank you very much. I now call Finlay Carson, and you're the last speaker in the open debate, Mr Carson. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'd also like to thank uh, Bob Doris for securing this debate in the Chamber. As a son and now a uh, proud dad of Hugh and Vicky, I welcome the opportunity to celebrate and recognise the role of dads and reflect on their importance in a child's development. I, like many men, don't get, or more importantly, don't take the opportunity to tell their dads how they feel about them. My dad recently celebrated his 90th birthday. He was born in 1926 and still lives on the same farm in Galloway. My dad has always been a hard-working man, farming during a time which witnessed an agricultural revolution, changing from horses to tractors and from buyers to automatic milking parlors. I came along in 1967 and he was still working six and a half days a week with one week off once a year after the tatty holidays. I used to see him briefly in the morning before school and then in the evening watching him fall asleep in the armchair tired after a day of physical labour starting at 5.30 in the morning and finishing at 6.30 at night. Sometimes making a living and making a life point in different directions but my dad always made a living with his family at the heart of it. Many nights we'd play chess. Between moves, he would tell me off for watching the television and not concentrating, and then I would tell him off for falling asleep and snoring. My sister and I loved when my mother was out and we'd bully him into getting the old reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder out to record us reading school plays or for him to sing Andy Stewart or some Will Fife song. On the half day he would give himself off a week, a Sunday afternoon once a fortnight, we would draw lots to decide where we would go to Stranraer to see the ferries or Prestwick Airport to see the planes, or my mum and dad's choice to go to the Sunday Barras in Dumfries or Logan Gardens. Unsurprisingly, it was always the ferries or the planes because my sister and I would never put their choices into the draw. We thought they didn't know, but I'm sure they did. It's only really a few years ago that I was able to really understand half of the father-son relationship. In the words of Mark Twain, when I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to 21, I was astonished at how much he'd learnt in seven years. Oh, beg your pardon. Sorry about that, presiding officer. We're enjoying your story. Oh, well, that's not so bad. <clears throat> As a teenager or a child, you don't take the time to cherish the little moments in life. It's a skill that we learn as we get older when it takes more than one sweetie to cheer us up. When I became a father 19 years ago, I found myself remembering and happily reliving all the moments that my dad and I shared together. And not a day goes by that I don't think about what he's done for me. Much of what I did with my son Hugh and daughter Vicky are similar to what my dad did with me. When I coached my son Hugh at football, I thought about all the times my dad took me to Sunrar ice rink when I was first learning to curl. And every time I play now, I still hear his encouraging words of wisdom. I know he, coached, he enjoyed when he was coaching me, and I uh, enjoy coaching Hugh just as much. 
When my father was interviewed by John Beattie just after I took the oath for Parliament, he was asked if he was proud, and he said, oh yes, adding, just like when we won the curling together. Now that simple comment so much, meant so much more to me than I think my father could ever know. There's lots of things he taught me now that I often reminisce about, reminisce about, from carving wooden boats, to building everything from sheds, decking, to go-karts and installing kitchens. He gave me the confidence to try these things myself, but unfortunately didn't pass on the necessary DIY skills. Even now at 90, when the rabbit hutch needs urgent renovation, he's still there with a hammer in one hand and a bucket load of enthusiasm in the other. Often what we become depends on what we learn from our dads, not when they're trying to teach us, but in unconscious moments when we're informed by little scraps of their wisdom. He seems to have had a never-ending patience that I am sure I tested on a regular basis. My father and I worked in a dairy farm in partnership with my father for years, and unlike many farming fathers, he passed over decision-making to me as soon as I joined the partnership. He made sure that he was always there for advice, but never interfered, letting me make my own mistakes when I was determined to make them. In conclusion, presiding officer, I, I spoke earlier of the huge advances in agriculture. These changes are echoed in the changes that have taken place in the home and workplace over the last 50 years. As stated in the Year of the Dad website, society hasn't caught up with these striking cultural changes. The old stereotypical dad being the married breadwinner and disciplinarian no longer serves in an age of increasing diversity and gender equality. It's time to celebrate and support the key contribution fathers make to children's development, family and community life. We need to ensure that organisations like Homestart have the resources to promote and enable equality at home and flexibility in the work for better work-life balance for dads who overwhelmingly want more involvement in the lives of their children. Deputy Presiding Officer, the values and quality of a dad can be seen in the goals, dreams and aspirations he sets, not only for himself, but for his family. Thank you very much. Thank you. I now call Mark MacDonald, Minister to Close the Government. You have seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, can I take the opportunity to pay tribute to Bob Doris for bringing this debate to Parliament uh, and indeed to all members who have taken part uh, in what I think has been a, a very appropriate celebration uh, of the role of dads, both in um, general in Scotland, but also uh, in the lives uh, of ourselves in Parliament and uh, those of our uh, own children. And um, I have obviously given my own reflections uh, on this uh, in my interview in Holyrood uh, magazine in relation to the impact that um, my own father had on my upbringing um, and also what I hope to achieve uh, as a father as well. And I recognise that those experiences will help shape some of the work I take forward in my role as a minister. Um, so the Scottish Government is clear that supporting dads to play a full role in family life is an important part of making Scotland the best place in the world to grow up. Uh, we provide support in a number of ways, including chairing the, fathers, uh, the National Fathers Advisory Board uh, and funding and working uh, directly a range of organisations. Um, this year, the, the key way we have demonstrated our commitment is by providing funding and direct support for Year of the Dad, uh, a campaign which recognises and celebrates the difference a great dad can make in particular to child development. Uh, Fathers Network Scotland deserve particular praise for leading the campaign, uh, a notable achievement for a small charity, uh, and I thank them for their efforts and commend them on what has already been achieved. For example, uh, nearly 100 events have been held, attended by nearly 10,000 people. Around 150 organisations have signed up to the campaign, along with around 3,000 individual supporters. Uh, Mr. Doris uh, referred to how we would develop an evidence base uh, on the, the, the role of fathers uh, as a result of the work on Year of the Dad. Um, I can advise that what we are hoping to do with that is to introduce a dad-specific survey as part of our Growing Up in Scotland study, which we hope will help to build on the, the work in Year of the Dad and ensure that the role of fathers uh, is more widely acknowledged within government policy moving forward. So Year of the Dad is inclusive and emphasises the widespread benefits of the involvement of dads. Uh, a real strength of the campaign is the recognition that families come in all shapes and sizes 
prizes. So when we talk about celebrating dads, we also talk about stepdads, adoptive dads, uh, granddads, and a whole range of other male role models, which I think touches on the point that Ian Gray quite rightly made about both um, being the flag bearer for the granddads in the debate, uh, but also about the uh, absence of dads in some children's lives. But So it's also about the positive male role models who can influence uh, those children's upbringings as well. And as Bob Doris rightly notes in the debate motion, Year of the Dad is about benefits not just to dads themselves, uh, but also to children, mums, families and wider society, which is uh, absolutely vital. I would just say you can always spot the new dad, uh, presiding officer, when they tell you how enthusiastic they are about waking up at 5.30 in the morning. Um, I can just advise Mr Doris, as the parent of an eight and six-year-old myself, I can advise him the novelty does wear off. Um, I'm delighted that Homestar are supporting Year of the Dad. I wholeheartedly agree uh, that Homestar are well placed to support dads and their families given their strong track record in working with families with young children. Indeed, Homestar is an organisation I know and admire. Uh, I'm particularly aware of the great work of Homestar Aberdeen in my local area and I'm continually impressed by the range of services on offer, the quality of support provided and the commitment and enthusiasm of staff and volunteers. I think Donald Cameron quite rightly highlighted the importance of the work of those volunteers and I think it's important that we recognise that in the Chamber today. Um, the Scottish Government has shown our belief in the work of Homestar by awarding £197,000 for 2016-17 through our new Children, Young People's and Families Early Intervention Fund. Uh, I'm delighted this funding is enabling Homestart to work with dads across Scotland, in particular through the projects referred to in this debate. Um, this evening I will be at the parliamentary reception uh, that Bob Doris is hosting and I'll be uh, looking to speak a little bit more about that work. Uh, the success of Year of the Dad has been a collective effort, so with that in mind, it's important to recognise the contribution of a range of partners. Uh, firstly, there are organisations who do great work directly with dads, organisations such as Dads Rock, Families Need Fathers Scotland, Midlothian Sure Start, uh, and One Parent Family Scotland. I could list many others, uh, all working diligently to support fathers. Secondly, there are services who are leading the way as regards involving and supporting dads. South Lanarkshire Council and uh, Fife Council NHS Fife Partnership are doing particularly fine work in ensuring that services are designed and practitioners are trained to include dads. Uh, Fulton McGregor highlighted work being undertaken in our prisons and I'm aware of a number of projects taking place across Scotland's prison estate uh, which uh, has been recognised as leading the way in terms of providing that link between fathers who have been incarcerated uh, and their children to ensure that those children maintain a link and a bond with their father. Uh, thirdly, as Bob Doris noted, it's important to recognise the value of funding uh, from other sources. Uh, in the case of Homestar, it's the STV Appeal and Catanach Trust. Uh, it is unfortunately the case that the Scottish Government cannot always provide all of the funding to support the good work going on in Scotland, so it is pleasing that there are other funders out there able to help organisations and projects which benefit children and families across the country. In terms of the discussion he asked for about forward, uh, looking forward in terms of funding, I'm more than happy to give that further consideration and consider how best we could take something forward in that area. Uh, finally, I want to recognise the employers uh, who demonstrate excellent practice in supporting dads. Um, that's hugely important, as evidence shows work can be a major issue for many dads when it comes to family life. Uh, we know that men have traditionally struggled to secure flexible working arrangements, which allow them to be as involved as they want to be at home. Uh, but employers are increasingly recognising the importance of supporting dads, not least because it makes business sense. Uh, research shows that amongst the most disaffected and disengaged employees are dads between at 25 and 35, um, so supporting them is important to recruitment, retention uh, and productivity. Uh, as part of my portfolio, I'm Lead Minister for Family Friendly and Flexible Working, uh, working closely with my Ministerial colleague Jamie Hepburn. Uh, that's a clear signal of our recognition that working patterns and family well-being go hand in hand. And Gillian Martin uh, discussed this both last week in her own members' debate uh, and also again this evening. And I would point out to Ms Martin that as part of Year of the Dad, we've produced 24 short films, uh, most of which are of dads uh, often having taken a flexible working package to spend more time uh, with their family. Uh, we hope these films will help to uh, encourage other dads to take flexible working packages and also encourage employers to consider more flexible working packages for their employees. Our work in this area includes running Scottish Top Employers for Working Families Awards each year in recognition of the importance of supporting dads. Uh, one of our award categories is the Fathers Network Scotland Best for All Stages of Fatherhood Award. Last year, the winning organisation was Barclays, uh, with the Scottish Parliament, of course, being highly commended. We're also working with employers 
to increase the use of shared parental leave, uh, which allows parents flexibility in how leave from work is taken in the first year following their child's birth. Uh, and as part of Year of the Dad, uh, workshops for new dads have been piloted in Police Scotland and the Scottish Government with a view to rolling them out to other organisations next year and beyond. So in closing, presiding officer, I just want to pick up on a key phrase in the debate in motion, uh, lasting legacy. Um, there have been a few references to legacy uh, in today's debate. Uh, in recent weeks, Fathers Network Scotland and the Scottish Government have been seeking feedback on the impact of Year of the Dad. Uh, and I'm advised that just yesterday we received an email uh, from someone in Australia uh, thanking Scotland for leading the way uh, on this issue. Um, so Year of the Dad has focused debate on the importance of dads in child development and in family and community life. We should be proud that Scotland is leading the way in supporting dads and their families. It's a fantastic start, but it is only a start. We need to maintain our collective efforts in order to deliver equality at home and at work. And the valuable work of organisations like Homestart is therefore vital to leaving that lasting legacy. Thank you very much. That concludes the debate. I now close this meeting of Parliament.